Today, guys, we are back for a rematch. Now, all of you asked for a OBS versus second gen video, and I made it. And in that video, all everyone commented is, this isn't fair, why isn't it 99.73 versus 99.59? So I figured we had to do a rematch. So today, I've got my buddy Liam here. He has a 99 F250 7.3 power stroke, and I have my 99 Dodge Ram 2500 with the 5.9 liter Cummins. So today we're gonna be taking these trucks head to head. We're gonna be comparing their drivability, power, uh, their reliability. We're gonna be comparing their interior comfort, ride quality, and just general ownership, what it's like to own these trucks from two people that own the trucks. So to start out with, let's talk about the powertrain. Now, my truck is an automatic transmission mated behind the 5.9 liter 24 valve Cummins. For all of you guys that are not familiar, the 24 valve Cummins is an electronic uh, controlled, um, basically nth generation of the 5.9 liter Cummins. So that was originally introduced in 89, same legendary reliability, but updated in uh, the late 90s all the way through 2002 for the 24 valve truck to be electronic to one, meet emission standards, two, just have more power, better control. Um, the 24 valves also add more efficiency overall to the engine. On this side, we've got the 7.3 power stroke. So that is, again, kind of like the nth degree of 7.3. This was the last generation of 7.3, so it had all the familiar stuff of the 7.3, but it got upgraded injectors, better turbo, just all around, it's gonna be more power. So if you're looking at the 7.3 trucks, the Super Duty Body Style 7.3s like Liam has are gonna be kind of the, the best 7.3s ever made. And in reality, this is probably the best power stroke ever made. This is the best diesel that Ford ever put in their trucks. Yes. After this, they kind of had a rough patch with the 6.0, the 6.4, and they didn't really get it right again until they made the 6.7. So if you're a Ford fan, this is kind of the truck, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Liam's owned this truck for probably about 10 years now, right? Yeah, just over 10 years. Yeah, so and I've owned this one for about a year now. So. Give or take, we've got some decent experience. Obviously, Liam's owned his for a lot longer than mine, but I was really curious to see his take, and that's why I brought him on for this video, because I'm kind of biased towards the Cummins trucks, and Liam is definitely a Ford guy, flew and through. So I want to get his opinion on what he thought of this truck and his truck. Now, in terms of power delivery, I have to say, I think the second gen in my book wins just slightly on the low end, right? So this is a, a six uh, in a row, basically a straight six orientation engine. And so that's gonna be the most efficient torque possible out of the diesel engine. So numbers aside on paper, in terms of actual driving the truck, I think this one has more grunt, more oomph off the line. So the 99, I've said this a million times, but these trucks pull so hard. The straight six just has a ton of torque. So even though they don't necessarily have the most horsepower out of all those trucks in that era, the torque is just incredible. Like I, I love this engine. I love the power delivery. I love the torque. Um, I, I just really like the power band on this truck. The 7.3, on the other hand, I feel like has more top end power. I think that's where those trucks yeah. really excel is a little bit higher in the power band. Like over 2000 RPM, this truck kind of loses it and falls on its face. The 7.3 really comes alive at that range. Is yeah. that kind of what you feel like? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think towing wise, it's kind of the similar thing where like this truck, it, it's happier in low RPMs. It just feels like it's pulling like a freight train, whereas the 7.3 is going to be revved up higher, kind of at a more sprint feel type of that, if that makes sense. But putting down decent power, but just kind of at a higher RPM. So coming off a stop like that is where you really notice the 99 Power Stroke has way more power than the early Power Strokes. And a lot of you guys pointed out in the last video where I did the 97 versus 999 Cummins and said it wasn't fair. Um, this is fair. I mean, this is a huge step up from what these trucks used to be. Um, you know, definitely in terms of power delivery, more torque, more horsepower, everything immediately noticeable. I have a bank six gun on it. I didn't put it on because I needed more power towing or anything like that, but it definitely is a lot more fun. And with the six gun or with any kind of tuner or chip that you put on it, these things are have a lot of power and they're pretty quick off the line. So powertrain, the final thing I want to talk about, we talked about the engine, but I think it's fair to talk about the transmissions now. Both these trucks are automatics. Now Liam has a semi-built, like lightly built automatic, so he's got valve body torque converter. My truck is bone stock in terms of the transmission, but I think this is where Ford definitely pulls ahead in terms of the powertrain. Now, like you can argue back and forth in the engines, but transmission wise, I think Ford definitely has a better transmission. 
The 47RH can be built very effectively, very cheaply actually, um, to be a fantastic transmission, but stock to stock, like if you have a completely bone stock truck, I think the Ford is definitely gonna take the cake. Um, it's just, it's got a better transmission, I think, overall. Ford really got it right on these transmissions. They shift solidly, they're reliable. Everything about these transmissions just flat out better than the 47 that's in the second gen Cummins. So Ford definitely takes the win. That's something you notice hauling, towing, or just daily driving these trucks, the trucks shift better. Now, one big complaint I have about the second gen platform in general, whether it's 12 valve or 24 valve, same thing, is the transmissions are not great. So it's stock power levels, they're fine, they'll hold, um, but the big issue is just power delivery. Like they just feel super sloppy, they shift so lazily, it almost feels like a CVT. Like it, it's a genuinely bad transmission. The nice thing is that the transmission has plenty of upgrades. So if you want to make it a really good transmission, build it, it'll handle tons of power, it'll have no issues, but in stock form, it really does hold the truck back. It just doesn't deliver power well. It really just struggles to pull loads. It, it genuinely holds the truck back in comparison to the Super Duties. So now in terms of drivability, in terms of ride quality, in terms of what it's like to actually drive this truck, Liam, what did you think back and forth between the two? What was it like driving them? Would you rather drive a 500 mile road trip in the second gen or in your truck? <laughs> second gen. Why? For sure. <laughs> Why? The suspension uh, on the 5.9 is 20 times better than the 7.3, for sure. Uh, yeah, 7.3 is extremely rough. All right, one of the biggest cons is ride quality on these things. Um, as you can tell, <laughs> as you can tell, it gets pretty rough. Um, I'm in construction, and a lot of the work I do is down in Los Angeles. So going on the 405 uh, is terrible, and everything just gets rattled. So that's kind of a pain. Um, but yeah. People will probably argue with me about that on the second gens, but there's a lot that you can do in these trucks to improve ride quality. So like right now, we're going over a super bumpy section of road. In Liam's uh, 7.3 with the solid axle and the leaf springs up front, we were literally bouncing up to the ceiling. On this truck, we're just cruising. So having the coil sprung front end with control arms is a huge advantage. Um, gives you a lot of room to upgrade. So this one's on like a Carly system right now. So super, super smooth. His truck actually has custom deepers on it, but even with that, it's still really rough because it's just, it's lease springs on a solid axle. Like there's not much you can do with that platform and architecture to really improve the ride quality. Whereas with these trucks, you can make some huge gains. So like we said in the trucks, it really comes down to suspension architecture. So in the rear, both these trucks are lease springs. It's gonna be an even battle. But up front, because the second gen is using a coil spring design with control arms, it's essentially like a, a four link uh, coil front end. That's gonna have the huge advantage in terms of ride quality. And if you're looking at upgrades in terms of moving from stock to something, way more potential on those trucks. Now in terms of interior comfort, uh, this is where they kind of start to pull away from each other. So the second gen is comfortable inside. Um, yeah. You really like the interior. I do. But in terms of quality, it's trash. Uh, in terms of Liam's trucks, what do you think of your quality and your interior in the Super Duty? It's much better. Everything in the Dodge uh, feels like it's going to break if you just twist it or pull it a little too hard. Whereas on the 7.3, everything just feels like it's set in and it's not flimsy or loose. I don't know, everything on the on the interior, the 5.9 just feels loose. But one thing about the interior, um, I, like I said, I love the, the color. I love the party fabric, as we call it. One thing though, we did measure and the inside of this cab is smaller than the 7.3. I know Liam definitely likes the interior in this thing better. Um, and like, even though this thing, he's owned this truck for a long time, it's got a lot of miles. It's still actually in really good shape aside from upholstery damage. The dash is in one piece, all the plastics are in one piece, and that's way more than you can say about a second gen of the same year with the same miles. In terms of interior, um, everyone knows the second gens have horrible interiors. Like, they're very comfortable, but the quality is just trash. Uh, the plastics, everything falls apart. I'm literally afraid to open the cup holder in this truck because I feel like it's gonna break. So I put my water bottles on the floor because I don't think the cup holder can hold them. Like, that's kind of the level of quality these second gens are at. Whereas Liam's truck, no problem. You can put a cup in the cup holder, you won't have to worry about it at all. So that's definitely a huge advantage to the 7.3s and just the power strokes in general. So the Super Duty just has a better interior all around. I think comfort, quality, everything. 
I am a Cummins fan through and through, but I've got to hand it to the 7.3. Like, just the Super Duty body style after 99, they really stepped it up, and I think Ford kind of set the bar in terms of quality. Like, if you look at the Chevys from that era, you look at the Rams from that era, it's just not even close. Like, like Ford completely set the bar on those trucks for what interior quality should be. Yeah, and this, Cheap. this is really where the Super Duties pull away from the OBS body style trucks. So the OBS body style, so like the early 90s trucks, they do feel a little bit cheaper. Granted, not as cheap as the second gens, but they definitely felt a little bit cheaper, a little bit flimsier. When the Super Duty body style came out and uh, that really kind of changed things for, for Ford. And they really, I think, stepped it up in terms of interior comfort, quality, everything else. The other thing that the, we noticed, actually, we got a tape measure out. Liam's truck, the Super Duty body style, has inches more space inside. So you measured your cab from the back of the cab to the dashboard at 69 inches, right? 69 inches. Look at him, he's all excited about that. <laughs> this one was 65 inches from the dashboard to the back. And I actually didn't think they were that different, but when you got the tape measure out, it doesn't lie. There's, makes there's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely a difference. So yeah, definitely you notice uh, more interior space on the Super Duty body style. And this isn't even the crew cab, right? So this is extended cab short bed truck versus extended cab short bed truck. So definitely um, the Super Duty gets the win on interior build yeah. quality. And I think overall comfort, I think yours gets the win too. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, it definitely just feels more modern overall too. Yeah. So the next big thing that I wanted to talk about was kind of reliability and maintenance on these trucks. Both of these are legendary for their reliability. I mean, both these trucks, there's a couple flaws here and there if you really dig into it, but overall, these are some of the most reliable diesel trucks ever put on the road. In terms of maintenance though, um, I think that's where they start to separate. So ease of like simple maintenance, like oil changes and stuff, I would say the 7.3 takes the cake. I mean, how easy is it to do an oil change on your truck? It's super easy. Yeah. The oil filter's right there. The fuel yeah. filter's right on top of the engine bay. Ford really made it easy for everything that you're touching for basic maintenance to be super, super easy to access. Yeah, basic maintenance, for sure. Yeah, and on the 24 valve 5.9 trucks, it's a little bit more difficult. So accessing the oil filter, it's not hard, but you gotta take the intake two valve um, to get to the fuel filter is actually kind of a pain on these trucks. So basic maintenance stuff, I think the Super Duty wins by far. In terms of more extensive maintenance stuff, like let's say you're replacing a turbo, you lose. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You take the cake on that for sure. Yeah, so on the 5.9, it's just how simple this engine is. It's actually, if you actually go by the numbers, uh, it's fractionally uh, less moving parts on the 5.9 versus the 7.3. So it's just, it's a simpler engine platform. It's more compact, everything's easier to get to. The turbo's right there, injectors are right there. I mean, just if you're really tearing down one of these engines and having to like replace a head gasket or something, I would way rather do it on the 5.9. It's just the, the engine architecture is so brilliantly simple. And I think that's what Cummins nailed. And that's why Dodge partnered with Cummins because their engine design is just, just beautifully simple. Everything about it is so easy to work on, so well designed. It's basically like everything just boiled down to its perfect essence, I think. And I'm, I'm a Cummins fan, but as a 7.3 fan, I don't know how you feel. I agree with that for sure. Yeah, I mean like the, your 7.3 has been super reliable, but super when reliable. you do have to work on like how hard is it to place a starter? Uh, Starter's not too terrible, but anything that's on the top or on the sides, in the back, just because there's so much motor in there, 7.3 liters, and the space it takes up, it's it's a pain. Yeah, for sure, definitely. So, so for what it's worth, if you're having to work on one of these, which is going to be rare, definitely Cummins takes the win. Yeah. Now, in terms of reliability, I really wanted to bring Liam on because he works at a construction company that has a bunch of these trucks in the yard, and you'll notice I did a video of 99 to 99 high low mileage trucks. And one of those trucks is actually one of the trucks they have here in the yard. And so you guys have got really good experience with high mileage. Which one's more reliable for you guys? Between the 5.9 and the 7.3? Yeah, because you got both. They've both been very reliable. I would say the 5.9 takes the cake. The downtime on the 5.9 is definitely less. Um, whereas the 7.3, I know we had to replace injectors, oil coolers, stuff like that. But it really, all in all, it hasn't been terrible for either of them, but the 5.9 definitely, for both like high mileage trucks, the 5.9 definitely. When you say high mileage, what's the mileage that are both at right now? The Ford's at around just shy of 500,000, and the Dodge, if I'm not mistaken, that's... It was like 385, 385. it was like just shy of four. Yeah. yeah, so both those are high mileage, but I guess 5.9 takes the win there just barely? Just barely. But yeah. I guess if you're talking overall, like mileage wise, for 500,000 miles, that Ford, yeah, that thing gets, Parts from A to B, it gets fuel A to B. Never really had an issue with it. Just yeah. maintain it. So both good trucks. Yeah.
So to wrap this thing up, uh, we got to decide which one's the winner here. And I think I'd love to hear from you guys what you think is the win on both these trucks. And obviously everyone's going to come at us with their personal preferences, right? I love Cummins, you love Power Stroke, but all in all, legitimately comparing the two trucks side to side, which one would you take home? Like if both were equal, both were just as clean, both were identical, which one would you rather have? All right, well, I have to qualify first. If it's between these two trucks, I'm taking mine because the history I have with it and yeah, all that. But if I were to take the same trucks and they're both cherry, I think I would take the 5.9. Why? I don't know. I just, but driving both of them today, I would take the 5.9. It's just the, the feeling that you get with it and the look of it, I don't know. I just, I like it better. Huh, that, okay, that surprises so. me. I thought, I genuinely thought you were gonna pick yours. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I so, would. But I, I'm almost flipped. So I I love my truck, I really do. But I also love the 7.3s. I love the sound, I love the power delivery, I love the transmission. Um, the suspension kind of sucks, but I wouldn't mind 05 axle swapping it and doing like a Carly system on it. So that wouldn't scare me too much. Um, the interior comfort's better, the build quality's better. I think the answer is just have both, honestly. That's probably what I would try and do. That's probably what I'm going to try and do. I don't know, I, I probably couldn't decide, but I'm curious what you guys think. No, like if you, if all of you could only own one truck where you had to daily drive it, work it, do everything, which one would you own? I'd probably just try and own both personally. Can I say something too? Yeah. I think also the reason why I'm leaning towards the Dodge right now is where the companies are at now. I don't know, I just, I like, the present Dodge more than the present Ford. Huh. And maybe that's what's kind of... Maybe that's a future scary. video. Maybe we'll have to do one more comparing more. So if you guys enjoy this, let me know. Shoot a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And yeah, if you have any video ideas, stuff you want to see in the future, comment it down below. Liam, thank you for lending your truck and your time. Yeah. Appreciate it. Right on. See you guys later.